Going into the season, I think our number one rival and probably the person to beat is going to be Ben Ainsley and, and GBR. You know, they've come straight out of the America's Cup world. You know, Ben has had a few years off sailing these boats, but he's uh, you know, one of the most successful sailors in the world, so he's going to hit the ground running and he's poached the Team Japan crew, so he's going to be pretty bloody hard to beat. We're out there sailing with Ben Ainsley and uh, we're doing really good manoeuvres. We're racing upwind, we're within sort of, we're uh, about 10 metres ahead of him the whole way and we're tacking on him the whole way. And uh, I think a huge moment for me was we nailed every single foiling tack up the beat and he was doing everything perfect. He nailed all his foiling tacks, but he couldn't pass us. It's just, if we sail well, like, and we do all our manoeuvres at 100%, they can't overtake you. So we, we kept our tactics really tight and strong and we are just trying to really suffocate our opposition and show them that we aren't going to make a mistake and uh, they're going to have to do something crazy to beat us. And they did, there's definitely a touch here, you watch Australia come up underneath. Penalty to Australia, so Australia have to get in behind. We are starting to race, the Aussies have entered. This is the umpires, this is the umpires. Penalty, penalty Australia, early entry. Big mistake by the Australian team. That means that they have to start behind Japan, behind the opposition. It's a massive error. We just need to, in the pre-start, we just need to work on the process of having the the procedure from three minutes out or whatever. Yeah, I think it's, uh, everything. At two minutes, everything is already, uh, yeah, yeah. already in place. Yeah. How's the feeling with BAR? Eos. I don't really feel them. Really don't think they're going to be a worry. Our starts were not great in practice racing. We were sort of getting to that first mark between third and sixth, and uh, that we couldn't fight our way through the pack. Everyone was doing foiling laps, foiling manoeuvres. Uh, in one of the races, I think we we rounded in fourth and we did a full dry race and we finished in fourth. Drive yep. or tack. Drive or tack. Yeah, you know, the... yeah, they get to different we, answers. Alive, we couldn't overtake anyone, even with uh, perfect manoeuvres. Uh, so it shows that the level is a lot higher than it was and we've got to Make sure we get off the start line better because the overtaking lanes we had last year won't be there anymore. Was it a week in the you expect this? Uh, I was expecting everyone to be a lot stronger. Um, I probably didn't expect them to race so well. Uh, they, yeah, the teams are just really good. Like they were ahead of us and we just couldn't get past. Um, our boat handling was good. We were doing full foiling laps and uh, still couldn't overtake the Spanish or a new team. So, yeah, I'm impressed. What happens when you get complacent? Oh, that's a really good question. It's, um, you know, it, it's, it's easy to get complacent and uh, I guess the consequences can be quite dire at the end of the day. Oh, in sailing, the others catch up. It's nice and simple when you fall off the map, so. I've been complacent a few times. Uh, I remember one time at the 2008 Olympics in Beijing. I don't know if I was complacent, but I was the favourite. Uh, I knew I was going to win and everything. I was just expecting to walk away with it. Ended up finishing 22nd and uh, sort of being heartbroken for a while there. And uh, yeah, just you can't be complacent in sport in general, but especially not in sailing. We're dealing with Mother Nature. Everything's changing all the time. Impossible to predict, get 100% of the time right. So uh, yeah, there's no, no room for complacency in our sport. The question we're always asking ourselves is how can we be better? Got a bit of yep. for that. Awesome. Thanks, Matty. No, no, it's cool. Hey, let's all have a great day. It'll be no, good let's enjoy it. I think, I'm pretty it's sure it is 9.15. Let's enjoy it. I'm pretty sure it is 9.15. 9.15. Yeah, <laughs> <It is 9 laughs> let's have a great day, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's going to be a good day. Have you got some, uh, oh, there's some oh, paper towels. Oh, it's a jib, jib, shading. Yeah. Oh, that's good. <laughs>
yeah, yeah today's and shoot better. Getting through with some decent points. I was, was going to say, like, today's just a day to get yeah, around the track and just, and it's going to be a few like, the least, least mistakes. Yeah, like, all these new teams are going to be nervous and Always. stuff. And one thing, just, I was chatting to Parker and he was saying that one, you know, thing with us, like Ben and Nathan, probably, you know, like, we are aware of, you know, how much these boats can buy. Whereas I think people like Phil, that's just, you know, he's kind of a bit of oblivious to... And if we do find ourselves behind, just being patient, like, make sure we build our speed for good tacks and yeah. good jibes and we, keep we, it simple and everyone will fall around. We, fall around never, we never do a good job when we rush. <laughs> no. Yeah, yeah. We are in racing that well, but we've got all the tools to do well. We just need to kind of put it all together and execute, so... Well, if you're watching Sail GP for the very first time, the start is absolutely crucial. Here we go. Start, but then just look at the foreground. The French, 45.9 knots. This is superb. Frenchy, Frenchy come on. Come and French and first. I look at Great Britain trying to come wide on the outside. Here we go. Going for the beat. talking about Goobs, that's Ian Jensen, Olympic yeah, champion and right Olympic there, silver yeah, medalist with Nathan Outridge. Last year, he was on the Japanese boat. He's a massively important addition to the British team. Yeah, I mean, Ben's stepping into a boat there with two world-class sailors in his position, uh, two and three, sorry, the wing trimmer and the flight controller. Right. Really relaxed, Ben Ainsley's turned yeah. up in Sydney. I think he's really enjoying the sailing, really enjoying the guys he's in the boat with. I think if you get too close, whoa! Oh. Spain, France had a collision. Bring in the boat builders. It's going to happen at some point. They're building carnage on the race course. Closing in on the finish. What a view. And there is the inaugural win. Race one, job done for the greatest Olympic sailor in history. We had a hell of a moment there, Goob. Yeah. And Tom Slingsby. Well, if you're not going to win the opening race, second isn't too bad. That's the best he's done all week here in Sydney. He is intent uh, on making sure he successfully defends this title. Just felt like we were attacking into big headers the whole time, like, and it was making our life. Because we're coming out. So far, so good for Great Britain and Ben Ainsley. Australia, Tom Slingsby, with a little bit to do here. That's the Australian boat happening to jive away. They're at the back of the fleet, so they've had to try and make something happen. The jive at the top by the Australians is kind of okay. wasted distance sailed. Look at the speed from Tom Slingsby, over 40 knots, but it's Great Britain. Talking about the Australians, they're not on shot right now, but you know these, these conditions are great for overtaking. You know, it's a, a sort of getting your eyes out of the boat, seeing the opportunities, seeing where the wind is. Still watching to see what's going on with the Australians who were down in sixth on the preceding leg. You can see the Australians coming in hot here from the right-hand side. They were out the back. They basically could, you know, sort of throw it all out there and see what they could pick up on the right hand side of Shark Island and it's been a massive game. They are literally on the back of this pack now and they're going to be attacking this downwind. It's two from two from the greatest Olympic sailor in history and there's Tom Slingsby. Second in the opening race, third this time. Yes boys. Nice boys. That's really good. Sorry guys for that. Oh, it's all right. I thought something went wrong the way we went up. I want to check the data. I don't know where it's yeah. I never fucking do that. No, it's so odd. Did we get a huge lull or anything? That would have made the data come up. Or? From the hull of Tom Slingsby, the defending champions. They could really do with finishing off with a great performance here. But look at the British here. What? Tom, surely that's a penalty. Well, multiple penalties there. Great Britain, Australia, and Japan. We'll keep a close eye to see what happens with that one. That was better. Penalty. Penalty. Penalty, penalty clear. Penalty clear. USA. Hey, penalty clear. Let's go. Really important for Tom Slingsby that he asserts some dominance here on the fleet. 
because he was absolutely rampant 12 months ago. It was the platform from which he built towards the inaugural championship of Sale GP. Four wins out of five 12 months ago here in Sydney. That's not going to be the case here in 2020. What the fuck is that? Hey! Coming up. Hurt this. Really, really patchy. You can see the on the top of the screen the, um, the Danish in no wind, and these two coming around this turning left around this mark. They're all laying. They stand by. More down. Spanish here. Go wing down a touch. Ben Ainsley, he seems to have been very relaxed this week, maybe because he feels the pressure's all been on Tom Slingsby, but the Australians having a difficult time here on the third race of day one. Right, what do you think the issue is with the Australians? They are the only unchanged lineup from season one. They are the reigning defending champions. This is not what we would have expected from a very slick, well-oiled machine. Got me? My comms are falling out. The Australians trying to close in on Japan in third and USA in fourth. Tom Slingsby will give this absolutely everything as they close in on the finish, just down to the bottom. This is superb from Great Britain. It's a hat-trick on the opening day. It's a dream start for one of the all-time greats. Kirby coming home for fourth, Slingsby in fifth. Well, he's got a little bit to do on day two. Hello. That's very close. Sorry about that. Line the whole right. Oh, I'm angry. What the hell were these guys doing? Like, ley line and everything. Yeah, like, we're like 10 meters from a super yacht. 